I mean the plight we're in, the situation we're in now. Every word he said there, we are unfortunately ruled by not all, but too many people who, who have nothing but darkness in their eyes, <laughs> in their hearts. I, um, I, I, resist, uh, I resist the temptation, and I'm not going to say I always resist it successfully, yeah. Yeah. but I resist the temptation to um, categorize other human beings mm. and, and presume to know mm. everything that's in their hearts and minds. I can observe their behavior. There you go. And I can. Yes. I judge this I make, guy's behavior I, yeah, now, yeah, yeah. predetermined. But it's, it's, uh, it's discouraging, and we have a lot of work ahead of us yes, because yes. when, as many states, just taking the United States for a moment, mm -hmm. um, obviously a lot more could be said about different countries. Oh, yeah. But in the United States, um, as of this summer, um, white men are, 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 white men of a certain ideological persuasion are exercising their political power and their economic power yes. to assert control over um, others, I believe, in an effort to hang on to the control that they've enjoyed for generations. This isn't the only way we could understand what's going on, right. but it is one of the pillars, the yeah. most yeah. Um, powerful ways, I yeah. think, of understanding yeah. Yeah. what we are experiencing yes. and the nature of the challenge. Mm -hmm. You could you could also frame it, quote unquote, exclusively, you know, in Christian biblical terms and say, um, you know, the freedom offered or proclaimed by Jesus for the oppressed when he said, you know, I'm coming and I'm coming so that the following can happen. And he quotes from Isaiah, yeah. says these things about freeing people. Right? And um, how do we interpret that in successive generations? Mm -hmm. um, well, we have to address it in our success. And our, and our future generation, well, and even now, before any that that's the problem, you getting you, it addressed. You know, because you were at First Churches yesterday, yeah. and you heard me say, "Yes, yeah. um, you heard that that for every generation that the United States has been in existence, we've been struggling with increasing self-awareness, still struggling to come to terms with our nation's original sin." which was institutionalizing racism, yes. encoding into the Constitution a contradiction in terms. Mm -hmm. And out of one side of our mouths, we were saying all men. We weren't even yeah, yet right. saying all people. Well, well, well all, all men. But, but all, certain all, people weren't considered. Well, all white property right, men. Total humans at that. So right. we have since changed the words of the Constitution. Mm -hmm. We have not changed our behavior mm -hmm. at the same depth even as the words. But the words have been changed, the way we apply them. We're trying. We're I'll trying. put it that way. We're trying but, uh, as, as each successive generation finds a way to articulate mm -hmm. holding our feet to the fire. You know, in, in, when we were young, young men, mm -hmm. young children even, um, Martin Luther King stood you know, in D.C. and said, America, we are here to present a dishonored check, right? Yeah. A check issued when the Constitution was adopted, a check reissued when the 14th and 15th Amendments were, 13th, 14th, 15th Amendments were passed, mm -hmm. and now you know, we're back again with the Voting Rights Act, which has since been gutted. gutted. <laughs> That's the only word right, right. for it. And, and so, yeah. you know, n and now we have Reverend Barber. Yeah. And others uh, like yeah. it, Bishop who Barber, are just yeah. bringing it again um, because we need to be reminded. Well, we don't only need to be reminded. Let me contend this. Uh, 
if you remember when you first met me, I had just written the first draft of the Honesty and Equity Amendment, which now we have the NAACP and the NAN taking a serious look. And on my trip, I'm asking them to find two, you know, they have the legal beagles and blah. Yeah. But uh, one of the biggest cornerstones of it is we changed the word to honesty and equitable equality. Because equality is a word that everybody's got their own eye of the beholder. <laughs> but when we put equitable in there, then equal is equal. People can receive e the same. Equitable to me, at least <laughs> what I'm hearing, is the notion that merely equal, equal treatment today doesn't mean anything. <laughs> exactly. I'm starting on the 10 yard line, right? <laughs> 10 yards out from the end zone, and you're starting <laughs> at the in, the, in the other end zone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's a touchback. There you, you know, go. Nothing personal. Before, before nothing personal. This starts. is just where All we start. Do this yeah. 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 But uh, the main thing uh, of our cornerstones of that is he said pursuits of happiness. Now we want to add in a clause protection of personal pursuits of happiness, which means even a majority can't tell the other side they have to have an abortion. Even a majority who, who's against abortion can't tell the one who want to have one they can't have. One. So we want to add in one line sentence protection of personal pursuits of happiness, which I believe is what Adams, Jefferson, Ben Franklin, when the, the Sons of Liberty were first putting the pieces together in vision, but they didn't state it specific, so it leaves the Supreme Court and the court's room to say, well, what was their intent? So <laughs> you know that I used to be a lawyer. No, I did not know yeah, that. Yeah, I did. I used to be a lawyer. <laughs> oh, great. I'm um, talking to someone I, who understands how that stuff works. Well, I do work to a point, <laughs> and there's a reason I'm a pastor now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, because, we don't have to get into a specific. Well, no, because I, I, I remember what some of the clergy who were, you know, <laughs> whose voices I listened to in the, let's say, the mid '60s to mm -hmm. and beyond. Um, who said, you know, changing the law does not change the hearts and minds no, of the people who, who are required to follow the law. Um, we have now a series in the last decade, uh, a series a little bit further back, but especially the last decade, of what I consider unfortunate Second Amendment Supreme Court decisions, yes. which basically... I think untether the words of the Second Amendment from any understanding of history. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, I don't know what, you know, telling the state of New York that they can't regulate where people can and can't carry <laughs> yeah. firearms yeah. Um, has to do with a well-regulated militia, mm -hmm. right? But but the, the current Supreme Court has already said that it's about individual liberties, individual rights. What I'm trying to say, Daniel, is I think uh, if, if we're going to start making amendments to the Constitution, you need to anticipate what later courts could do with them. Well, this is why when we write them, we leave no room, wiggle room for yeah. intent, because that's their total game plan. Right. Well, what did, like, we can go back and find out. I, so I, they're playing a guessing game. That's a roulette wheel. Where will it so fall? The, 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 oh, the and federal, when it falls, who, who did they place there with an ideology that would get them what they want? So the Federalist Society, the whole, yeah. from which um, I think many, if not all, of, of the most recent Supreme Court appointees, other than Katanji Brown mm -hmm. Jackson, um, <laughs> came from. I mean, they, they all had the blessing, right? the last three at least. Yeah. Um, 
was basically created to be the good housekeeping seal of approval for a particular kind of conservative legal thinker. Not just any conservative, but a particular kind. And um, I fear I fear that our Supreme Court has become so highly politicized in its appointees. I'm not saying it was, it was never a whiff of politics, but at least there, I believe there was more than lip service to not being completely results oriented. And I think, regrettably, for the last 40 years, longer than I've practiced law, um, it has see, become 40, 40 years ago. It would have been the 80s. Year. The 80s. Yeah. yeah so I, I started in, in yeah. Oh. I started in the mid 80s. Mm. Um, basically, since Bork, yeah. it's been in a Wish very was, yeah, no, no, no. It's been been, been very results oriented, and mm. um, so I'm not saying don't go for it. Oh, I mean go for it. You know. Well, um, well, the it, way it, we it, go for it yeah. is there's two other major factors. We have created a self-definition of character form. And as they said in the Senate hearings uh, about that guy in Ukraine there, that Lieutenant Colonel, mm -hmm. well, you haven't taken your, no, it was Stark, the guy in the FBI. You haven't taken your polygraph for two years. Oh. So the people who run around the world keeping us safe, you polygraph them, do you? Well, how about we polygraph you guys? Any taxpayer paid employee must fill out this form mm. so they can self-define their character. Then, once a year, we'll polygraph them to see if they're wearing the shoes they say they've got on. That's one of the biggest cornerstone. But before I even go on, from a ministry point of view, which both of us believe in the goodness of God, because the goodness of, of man and power is not working <laughs> for it. Right. You can't, even the birth of Jesus Christ, Buddha, Gandhi, the Dalai Lama, they haven't erased sin from the world. So if we can't erase it, at least have them define their character and fold them to the standard they define themselves at. And now, within a year, if they're doing dirty work, we can call them out on it. He said, she said, becomes mo. You say all of these congressmen, Bill Cosby, whoever, Supreme Court justices did this. Lady, take a polygraph publicly. Challenge them to do the same. Oh, they have the, the, the right to remain silent. But what does the right to remain silent encompass? Not incriminating yourself. Do the math. <laughs> you know, if you're afraid to come speak true, why should we believe you are speaking true? So this so, is my catch-22 for it. It's not my, a deterrent. My, my experience... <laughs> Uh, taught me that there are, are, and part of our shared theology would say there always will be yeah. individuals who will game the system. Yes, and that includes you know, pleading the Fifth Amendment, yeah. which is you know, and and I and I can anticipate your response, which is well, if they refuse to comply, they can't continue to serve, right? Uh, no, I won't say that. Okay. Uh, then where's the enforcement? Uh, the enforcement is catching them red-handed. When they can't come up with an argument for why they did it when they said they weren't like that. Okay. What well, more do we need to know I, I'm, to judge them as voters, as the public, confidence? I mean, if a lady says this all right, important I'm, person did them sexually wrong. I'm just using those instances as the, the prime candidate. Call him up. Take a polygraph. Ask him if he'll take one saying he didn't do it. Al Sharpton's gotcha. 
but we have to get to that point before we can even decide what to do about it. Well, I think that will be that'll be a hard one to get past. I don't think so. Okay. Because I'm going out there with my messages to the world that'll come out next month, and I'm going to tell them. You don't need a constitutional amendment on the books to do what I'm talking about. Take a polygraph, lady. You say this Supreme Court guy or this senator or whatever did this? Take a polygraph publicly. So, Challenge so, him to do so, the same and see if okay, he steps so that's up a, to that's the a, plate. That's a, a fascinating proposition for a federal statute. But you didn't come here to interview me about federal statute. No, no, but this is how we can't stop what's happening in, in human hearts and minds. But we can call it out and expose it. Right now, we're not even exposing it for what it is. Then once we expose it for what it is, hopefully our ministry people can say on their next service, so you're, this is the way to call out dishonesty in a way we didn't have the tools to when they created the Constitution. So what, it's all what about you, calling out dishonesty. What is your opinion? I assume you're following them. Um, are you following the hearings well, into you, the January 6th? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So what do you think of that? Well, it applies to that too. Even these guys who said, Oh, I didn't talk with Trump and, and his blah, 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 blah. You know, so call him out. Take a polygraph so, so, so we can believe. Lots of yeah. people have been deposed under oath. Mm -hmm. Lots of, lots of mm -hmm. recorded mm -hmm. testimony, yeah. documentary evidence. They are building a massive historical record. Oh, yes. And millions of people in the voting public don't believe it. I well, think it's is, all a hoax. Now you see what, where this system of self-determination of character, along with the polygraph. Okay, you say you're this. Now, if I ask you if you did this, can you pass it on the test? So, um, so it's a calling out. And the calling out is not well, a cure. But I am after cures instead of band-aids. That's what I call I, my I whole project. That. Cures instead of band-aids. Because band-aids come off, and guess what? The wound festers again every time. I, this, you know, I'm preaching to you. You're a personal choir. <laughs> yeah. and, and no one's got the total answer. I mean, John Lennon said love is the answer, but we love till, till, till we almost have been <laughs> well, tired and on our knees. And, Love, love alone is it? Love, love with your eyes open. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. Right. Abuse yeah. me once, shame on you. Yeah. Right. Fool me twice, shame on you. Uh, there's a third part of this all uh, that will fit in. Uh, when the debates the Lincoln-Douglas debate, when he said equal isn't equal unless they get the same. We also want to put a clause in that, let's say, should Trump or any Supreme Court or whatever be found heinous enough that any commoner would go to jail, mm -hmm. that we insert that, yes, they can be put under a, a house arrest situation where you give them a cottage, they're confined, but they can't just nothing. Because so, as long as the guy on top doesn't no one's get above punished, the law. Right. The, no yeah, one's but, but you can't say it and then say, but we don't put our president, then don't put them under house arrest like they did without just cause to Mandela. So, you know, but well, Mandela there has to be some. He went to a hard no, I thought he was under house arrest in a cottage in a house. Uh, from what I heard, not all of the time, but in the end, that last. Oh no! Oh no! I know he was I mean, yeah, like a commoner when he was oh, young. Yeah, yeah. But 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 you understand the concept because you said it yourself. If they don't, <laughs> no, no one. If no there's one. no punishment, even if you catch him, and prove it, then he is a
the commoner as well. Then, yeah, then it's just words on a page. Uh, so, so we're trying to do it, but this is why I need the Al Sharpton lawyer, the, the NAN, the NAACP lawyer, so Mr. Johnson. Oh, okay, and the Lincoln Project, who, who are the Republicans who want Republicanism to be honest. I mean, we need the input from the, the women's groups, everybody. So I'm going to North Carolina and I'm making a side trip. I'm leaving Thursday. I'm making a side trip to see Jim Claiborne's people in South Carolina while I'm <laughs> And Good. I can't do both this time, but I'll be back down there in the fall. And I went to Atlanta a year ago through May, right after Warnock's special election. Yeah, his boy picked me up at Amtrak. So I've made a connection with his camp, but I want to make a connection with Stacy. <laughs> oh, it up. Because uh, the other big pillar is the voting rights. And we have it down in our New Deal 2020 that all you need is birth certificate. If you're on SSI, Social Security, that's proof enough with the tool. You're a citizen. Stop all this nonsense. Period. Case closed, done. This has to be it. And I don't know anyone who will argue with it except the people who don't want people to vote because they ain't voting for them. <laughs> I don't know how else to stay. That is, how do you, you think know, about that? Well, we're at very high risk at the Supreme Court in the next year because there's a case coming up, as you know, which, if decided one way versus another, will allow state legislatures yeah, basically to decide. It's going to be open season. Yeah. And um, I think that's, uh, to use a, mm -hmm. a, an arcane legal term, goofy, mm -hmm. right? Uh, it's ludicrous. With, I with, try to find right, harsher right, right. words. Ludicrous is about Ludic it. Ludicrous will do. <laughs> um, so I, I mean, I would support um, the most open access yeah. reasonably possible. Yeah. And I think well, if you yeah, have yeah. a birth certificate and anything that and a document or, 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 yeah. or, a, or a naturalization paper. There you go. Um, right. And then any documented address in the jurisdiction where you want to vote, yeah. why can you not register the same day and then vote? I think originally it was pretty much like that, even though it was limited to rich or, white or, business. Yeah, I mean, all but, this stuff about, you know, hundreds of thousands of dead people voting, none of that's ever proven. Been none proven. of that's proven. Um, I'm sure it happened, but not enough to change an election I, I, as the right, courts, right. lower courts. The, mm -hmm. yeah. Every, I think anybody willing to hear it knows that, that all of the allegations brought by Trump and his supporters in the 2020 election were thrown out. Yeah. Dismissed. I think 60 out of 63. Right. So <laughs> something, I mean, astronaut. Yeah. And yeah. people who are skilled at manipulation, people deception. who yeah. are skilled at deception, people who blatantly engage in um, mis feeding people what they want to be fed and then asking them to follow. And throwing stuff up against the wall to see if it can stick so well, they can cause trouble behind it if they get enough people to listen. We knew what we were in for when Kellyanne Conway said, maybe he's referring to alternative facts. Uh, yeah. Okay. So it's been 1984, right? <laughs> Since 2016. Well, what New Deal 2020 and the honesty and equitable equality amendment do is put that in check. We can't eliminate it, but we can expose it way more quickly than the courts or these hearings do. I mean, here we are, what, a year and a half later? Mm -hmm. Hey, you call them up there, will you take the polygraph or not? She took one and she says you did it. If you don't take it and pass it, guess what? I think we can convince the public you did it. <laughs> Case closed. Case closed. You, you've been a lawyer or something. 
I'm sure you could win that one if you had someone who took a polygraph and no one who wouldn't. You know, I mean, give me a break. Is America that fickle? And <laughs> We're finding out. We're finding out, aren't we? But the thing that makes all of this work right, is in my travel, I'm asking all of these groups, because I'm going to stop them. Ask people like the mayor of New York and Cory Booker people to meet me when I go through New York, New Jersey. The same in D.C. who ever meet me at Amtrak, and, and I want everybody to add a respectable distance to the polling booths, places, catch people on the way in and out, and get signatures in every state to get their sign the ballot for 2023. Good luck. It's, that's no, a, no, but that's a but big we have, ground. But we that's have a, the soldiers between all of these big, groups. It's a big ground game. You know just, yeah, but but the soldiers are there. Okay. I mean, between Stacey Abrams, Al Sharpton, the NAAC, the Lincoln, the women's groups, the gun people's group, who, who are oh, the people are there. The soldiers do it, yeah, and we've got their vote and whoever they can convince to sign it on the way in and out. So this election, as Biden said, God will bless. will be to secure the future heart and soul of America. <laughs> and uh, let me uh, leave you with this. I think we've talked about as much factual as uh, uh, this is the new. What was that? The flyers for senator. Now, this is my on going. Mm -hmm. This was the event. No. Oh, the no, no, that's my stuff on here. Yeah. Okay. But you see what it says there. <laughs> ah. And we also are going to put clauses in the Constitution that state the courts are there to this to judge right and wrong. They aren't there to tell the public how to live. That is the job of our elected politician. Is the bottom line. Okay. Uh, I hope you agree. <laughs> uh, that's for another conversation. Yeah. yeah. Because but, but that it needs to be put in there in, in some fashion so we can get the order of things in the right perspective. The courts have taken over what the politicians are supposed to do as dictators, basically. Or they're trying to with this abortion. And, and you and I would never have an abortion unless it, it was a matter of you had to. Not just because, but just like our saviors said, I will speak to whoever chooses to listen. I will not browbeat and force them into accepting the way I say things should be. So I know we both follow his lead as much as humanly. Yeah, we speak to whoever chooses to listen. <laughs> but to tell someone, oh, I'm listening, but I don't care, <laughs> is a totally different thing. God bless and keep you. Yeah. So thank you. Oh, thank you. This time has been invaluable. It's rare that I get to sit down and speak to someone who knows a little about the legal, well, a lot about the legal, and a lot about saving people. And do you like that beginning we have? I do, I do. We promote saving body, soul, minds, and futures. Futures. It's without hope. <laughs> and here in Northampton, isn't that all of our three? I mean, I was talking to Lance, and, and his biggest thing is souls and bodies. I said, yeah, but we got to save their features and their minds, too. Because what's happening to people's minds, they don't know what to think anymore. It's all, it's all together. Yeah. It's all of a piece. So those are save four corners. The whole person. The whole person. Thank you. Thank you. I Thank hadn't you. thought of stating it that way, but yeah. Well, it's the whole person. Yeah, yeah. yeah not because just you can't, you, it's pretty. It's hard to talk to somebody about what's, how is their soul when they're starving. Right? When they've been sleeping outside for decades. Well, before we end this, there is that fourth cornerstone, and that's the economics. I just wanted to run this by. We have settled on a $12.5 an hour minimum wage nationwide. 
minimum. Now, with this, we also, in tandem, have an American worker dividend, which means two and a half cents on the dollar that comes into everybody who's got a cash register who does business in America has to be shared with the hourly employees. This way, when big business is making trillions and giving the people scrap, or just think about it. Well, Boeing, I mean, I, Bo I, no, take yeah. Boeing or the Space Age and Airplane or eBay and them. Uh, even take the casino. If every employee there got two and a half cents on a dollar to share, I mean, even the 7 Eleven around the corner, if he does $2,000 on a ship, that means the clerks and the people working out will be getting an extra 50 bucks for their ship. I'm, you know, I'm not an economist. <laughs> well, I, but you can I, add I, the I, figures. I, I mean, I'm, that will pull people I up. Am, the I sharing am, of the money. I'm all in favor of, hmm. of um, devising effective ways hmm. to help the people who've been left behind exactly. in the last 50 years yeah. because the yawning gap, right? And it's in, yawning in, fast. In, in income <laughs> and wealth mm -hmm. is, you know, the middle class is disappearing. Mm -hmm. And we just have the wealthy and uber wealthy and the poor. But what that means is a kid getting out of high school I, I'm with a minimum of wage job you never can now up. make over $30,000 a year. Right. With the dividend and so, that wage drop, I'm, which is what we yeah. need. And no one can go off for less than 600 and not struggle. Even if you've got no dependents. I mean, what, 10 years ago, we'd get lunch for $5? Now you're talking 10 Just I, for lunch, for breakfast. If you can find it. <laughs> I mean, it's crazy. You know that. I'm preaching to the in the economic, but this will solve a bit. And our pitch with this is the indigent become working poor. The working poor have a crack at becoming middle class. The middle class has a crack at becoming up Dan, 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 and the Dan, Dan. well I, I'm off. on board with the concept. Yeah, but the well off remain well off. You're not taking enough from them. <laughs> which matter. is which, which, which has to be in there because, oh, we can't give them that. Okay, <laughs> we're done. We've, we've heard enough, but we can't give them that.
Okay, we're here back with Speak Up America on NoHo Live in downtown Northampton at my usual spot in front of Wayne Osano and Michaelson Studios. And we have with us today... Reed Sargent. And what we're looking for is our cures instead of Band-Aids. Uh, these young men who are gonna speak may not know, but uh, we've written two amendments to the Constitution to uh, actually polygraph every taxpayer paid employee. And we want to institute it as an amendment so the Supreme Court themselves has to come clean within a year about why they judged what they judged. And we call it the Honesty and Equitable Equality Amendment. And that's just the beginning. There's all sorts of things in it once you get to New Deal 2020 where the Senate can't make their own rules. <laughs> we'll set the rules. We the people are the fourth wheel of government. We the people elect politicians to tell us how to live. And we don't always trust them, but we accept that faith. None of us want the courts telling us how we must live. Uh, we don't trust the courts. They're appointed by people with special interest. And now we'll get opinions of what people from the public think. Uh, I, for me, the biggest change I think we need is to get some younger people into politics, not necessarily like old people. We got Our president's, what, like 80 years old? Yeah. He's um, bringing views that have been around for 80s, 80 years plus. So mm -hmm. we need younger people that are going to come in and bring the change that we need. Not necessarily like my age. I am 18 years old. Mm -hmm. I am not nowhere near mm -hmm. capable of making change. But we need people in like the 30 range yeah. 30, that have 40. new yeah. beliefs that haven't been around for a while that will make change, not just a tiny bit of change, but a lot of change. Okay. And let me also state for the record, one of the things we have in New Deal 2020 is we are looking to institute, uh, get rid of kindergarten. You go one through five. Then in middle school, you go six and seven. Then eight, nine, 10 in high school. At 16, you become an adult. You get the right to vote. And you spend years 11 and 12 going to a tech school, computer school, learning a skill. So we catch up with Europe and Asia, where at 16, they've graduated. They're ready to join the world. We are lagging behind. The 16-year-old vote is most important, especially to lead to what you're talking yes. about, because people will be coming into politics at a younger age. Would you have any other opinions that you'd like to give right now? Of, uh... Not any that I can say live. OK. Thank you, Thank you sir. Very much. We're still downtown here in front of Wayne Osano and Michelson Studios in downtown Northampton. We have two young people here, which this weekend I'm really looking for opinions of preteens, teens, 20-somethings, the people who aren't involved in the system yet, but can see it's a system that they don't want to be involved in the way it is, except to change it. We promote a 16-year-old vote. We promote getting into kindergarten. We promote preschool being taught from day one, one America. And we'll have grade school one through five, middle school six and seven, and high school eight, nine, and 10. And 11th and 12th grade, like in Europe, will be for job skills, junior college, et cetera. Now, now that these young people know that, what backs it up that needs to change uh, in society and Washington? And introduce yourself. Uh, I'm Cam. I'm Audrey. And just speak your mind. All right. One of you. Um, I think the environment, did we go closer? All right. I think the environment um, is one of the most important issues today. Unfortunately, uh, most of our politicians, um, including those on the left, uh, don't prioritize it. Um, 
over you know economic gains. I think that's one of the uh, most pressing issues today. Yeah, I also think we have a big issue with gun violence that really needs to end. It's just happening more and more, and nobody has the power to do anything about it. And I think a system that can't like change people from literally just being shot in the streets is a system that works. And in the schools, I might add. Let me throw one more thing at you. Uh, you may not know it, but the Senate can make its own rules. We're making constitutional amendments, have written them, that we're going to try to get on the ballot for 2024. That not only controls how they operate, but we have an honesty and equitable equality amendment, which means, like uh, it was said in the Lincoln-Douglas debate, uh, equal ain't equal unless people get the same. This is the problem in society. Uh, Probably before you were born, they had a thing they called Job Corps and Affirmative Action, but it was targeted for you had to be a minority or you had to be this or that. We want to make it so they bring back Affirmative Action, which means they try to find jobs for everybody who needs a job, regardless of your ethnicity or, or skin color, whatever. Uh, we also feel that the jails and the courts, they call it rehabilitation, they rehabilitate nobody. In fact, once they put you in there, they use it against you the rest of your life for you not to get this and that that the rest of America can get. Uh, do you have any opinions on how that needs to change? Because a lot of parents over the years, and I'm 70 years old, well, if I throw the kid in jail, he'll learn. What do you think he learns in jail? <laughs> I don't. Uh, I don't think he would learn much. Um, I know there's a lot of um, issues with those coming out of prison, struggling to readjust um, to the free world. I also think the private prison system um, should be abolished. Uh, in many cases, the, the for-profit prisons, um, the profit aspect uh, outweighs any potential justice being served in those prisons. Um, yeah. And let me ask the young lady a pointed question. We also have it in the amendment that the courts cannot dictate how we live. They have to institute what the politicians vote in for us. Uh, I don't have to tell you what happened with the Supreme Court and is happening these days. Could I have a young lady's opinion on yeah, I just think, I mean, the Supreme Court is super outdated. There are, like, no term limits, and which I think is just, like, I don't know, completely unethical. You have no, like, changing opinions that, like, develop along with what, like, society needs. And it's really just, like, the opinions of such a small group of people. And that, like, a body that small it can no way, like, represent, I don't know, society as a whole. And, young lady, you've just given me a new addition and adjustment to put in. Maybe we should put in 10, 12, 15-year limits on Supreme Court justices. Uh, I don't know where the years would... What do you think would be better? 10, 12, 15? Just get an opinion. I think around that range, um, because I know the Supreme Court um, was intended... Uh, to have longer serving officials, um, especially when compared to like, if you look like the House of Representatives where it's only two years, uh, the Senate is uh, six, really six yeah. yeah. Um, so presidents I, are only eight. Presidents are only eight at the most, yeah. So I think- So give them 12. Yeah. I would say give them 10 to 12. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we'll give them 12. We don't want to kick them out right away. But, <laughs> but hey, in 12 years, you get to have your say. Then yeah. let, yeah. let well, newer the, voices, newer minds. The country changes so much. like. It, hard to imagine what a different world we live in compared to America in, you know, 2010, 12 years ago. <laughs> and you were there country, as a yeah. little kid, and it isn't the, only in Northampton. Uh, <laughs> I put Northampton up as the, the poster child city for America, where it doesn't matter whether you're gay, straight, rich, poor, but there is one last question. Do you really think that a poor white kid 
has it any better off than a poor person, a black, brown minority? Um, no, not necessarily. Not there definitely all. are like racial disparities in America, but I think ultimately the biggest issue is class. Um, and I think it's more of an economic issue than exactly. a racial issue. Poor is poor. It don't matter what color you And everybody who's poor needs help to get a leg up. Well, bless you for your opinions and your time. And what was your name again? Audrey. Cam. And I bless you. We need the opinions of people in your age group because what we're doing now is the world we're going to leave you and my grandkids and three great-granddaughters. I have ten grandkids and three great grand. And I fear for the world we're creating they're going to inherit. Thank you so much. Thank Stay you. blessed. Glad to be back in Thorns in downtown Northampton. We're here with the manager of Share, as you can see, coffee shop. Uh, they have been here under many different names in the past. But uh, they've been here about a dozen years. And they've helped step forward with uh, helping us with our Tuskegee Toddlers Fund. Uh, them, along with nine other businessmen, have helped us collect $650 to seed the program. Uh, we give the money directly to the Survival Center. And they help the indigent and the needy provide dry butts and toddler nutrition. Uh, before I go on, let me say our next show will be on the 27th. We're looking to get a place like the VFW, and we have many important people from the state coming, as in the mayor from here in Northampton, the police chief here in Northampton, the mayor from Hoyoke, Lindsay Sabadosa, and a newcomer to state politics, uh, the mayor of uh, Salem, Mass., who's running for lieutenant governor. And this is just the seating, the $650. We're going to put on an event for $20 a ticket. That includes dinner, a meet and greet with these dignitaries I just spoke of. But to get to what we're here for today, let me let the, the manager tell you a little bit about his uh, shop and how he's glad to be part of this community. Yeah. Uh, my name is Josh Wood Triplett, manager here at Share Coffee. Um, we're, of course, so happy to help anybody in our community. So it was not even a question um, about helping out with a donation um, to the, this you know, wonderful cause. Um, and we're happy to support the community every day by just being here with smiling faces, delicious coffee, delicious egg sandwiches, um, and very happy to be part of the community. And I'm sure you'll agree. Northampton is the melting pot of America's social, ethnic, and economic culture because everybody here makes a minimum, I'd say, in this town of twelve and a half dollars an hour, if not fifteen or more. The police chief walks up and down the streets at least once, twice a week and speaks to everyone. A dirty homeless person a person who's dependent uh, on alcohol or drug. Uh, even the business people speak to the people I just mentioned, like they're human beings. Uh, we definitely have the society that all of America needs to adopt here. And I think that's why we're all happy to be part of this community, because there isn't anywhere like it, only in Northampton, but it needs to spread to everywhere. Thank you. Thank you.